how do you normally move forward to set up? Because I can see, yes, the you could have the, the helicopters at different positions, but do 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 you do you come together abreast as you move and you find um, areas where you NOE where, so where you hide behind? Go ahead. There's there's no one answer. It's completely we call it Met TC. Um, Mission, enemy, tactics, terrain, and I forget what the what is the what is the C? Shoot, I don't remember. Any guys out there that remember? Um, not concealment, right? No, it's like camouflage or something. I don't remember. Anyway, it it means it varies by the moment. So if you are doing team operations in a low threat environment and your shooter is behind your observer, then you're relatively co close together. If you're from two different teams or even requesting a missile from somebody that's not in your team, then they could be operating completely in a different area. So I think the answer is it just depends. You're not going to approach a target. It, you're, that's going to come out in the mission brief. I'm just kind of building. I'm not building an attack or tactical scenario here. I'm just going over the technical details. So okay. you, you, can, you can maneuver as you see fit. If you want to stay close to your observer, situation dependent you can do that i'm just talking about the constraints of shooting the missile and that's what all those numbers you saw on that on that knee board that's why they're there real quick the other angle we have to worry about um is the it's called the safety fan and just just to give you a, a visual of it well let me let me redraw this picture so that it's not quite so All right, we're observing from here. Shooter is going to be here. Actually, he's going to be here. All right, so here, here's this gun target line. So we call this the GTL. This is the LTL. All right, let's say this is uh, 100 still. And this looks like 085. All right, so we have a, a 15 degree difference. So we're within our separation angle. So this one's fine, okay? But now we need to worry about whether the missile is gonna go after the guy that's designating or whether it's gonna go after the target. So if you can imagine uh, this guy's designating and when that missile comes out, if you are far enough back here, when that missile comes out, it could very well see the source and uh, the reflection and it's, you know, chances are it's going to go for the nice, biggest, brightest signature. Likelihood of that happening are, you know, fairly low. I don't know what the percentages are, but there's a there's a way to get around that. So that's what this safety fan is, and that is 30 degrees either side of the shooter. Okay, and and this is a little bit in the weeds, but just so you've seen it, and you know, when somebody mentions this some other time, um, the way you calculate this is a chart I'll have to post. Uh, but you can see as long as the observer is outside of this zone, you're fine. So you can see if I move this guy back here, that angle changes, right? And now he's in that safety zone. So if he shoots that missile, there is a consideration about the missile going after the source instead of the reflection so that you do that analysis. So when when we post the charts and get into this stuff the way to if you find that your um if that your observer is in your safety zone to shoot the missile all you do is fly towards the target and there you close that angle off and now he's no longer um in your safety zone if you are down here does it turn i guess i can't turn it Oh, well, um, if you're down here and actually envision it this way, if you're outside of the separation angle, the way you get into the separation angle is just fly towards the observer. So you can ask him what his grid location is, and then you just fly towards him. And that gets you within the separation angle. All right. So all that to set up these remote shots. So a remote shot um, can be that the, the shooter never sees the target. And that's what we're going to practice tonight. 
That's why you you put the grid in your nav system. So when once again, just to review, what's driving this small box when you was the missile? If you have direct selected, it's your TAD's line of sight. If you select low or high, you are telling the aircraft that you are not the designator. You're telling the aircraft it's going to be a remote shot. And then the target location becomes the driver for where this box is. So you plug in that grid and you make it your acquisition source. And then you'll see when you select low or high, if you're up direct, as soon as you select one of these delivery modes, this is called a delivery mode, that box will jump. And if your TADS is looking over here, the box is going to be over here. And your target is somewhere, you know, some other place, it may very well jump to the other side of the screen because now you changed where that symbology is being displayed from. So that's an important thing to know. So when he says remote hellfire over and you, you know, respond, he's going to give you the grid. You go point add target uh, and then put it up as your acquisition source and select low or high. And then the other part of it is you need to code your missile to his code. So if he is 1172, obviously um, you don't want to shoot a missile that's not coded to his laser energy. It'll go. So when you go up your weapons page and you look at primary and you're up alpha and you look at your code list or your channel list and your alpha code happens to be 1182, that missile is looking for 1182. As the shooter, you don't care what your LRFD is on a remote shot. If you're designating for yourself on a lock-on after launch shot, then it does matter. But you know this could be Papa or whatever. What you have to verify is in channel. Go to that, and then you'll you'll see all those options. You know on the left, the bottom, and the right. Um. And you select the one that matches. So, it, you know, let's say it's Quebec is 1172. You make your channel Quebec and then verify it when you come out of channel. Your primary channel needs to match his code. Uh, and that's why I always uh, say the code and not the channel because two different aircraft can have an, an, an alpha channel and they may have different, they may be programmed to different codes. So it's good practice to just always reference the code itself, and then the CPG just make sure that um, that the code in your channel list matches the observer's LRFD. Okay, so this is really what I wanted to get after tonight: is that everybody understands what is driving that box, because when you select one of these other delivery modes. Uh, and your CPG is track happens to be looking at a target with his TADS, and he moves his TADS, uh, that box is not going to move. When you go back to direct and he moves his TADS, that box is just going to follow wherever the TADS is looking. Okay. Any questions? Okay. I think this only works with LOAL, correct? Lock on after lunch. That's the only way. Well, that's, yeah, that's your default, right? Um, Let's go over that real quick. So what happens when you was a missile, you're automatically in lock on after launch. If you start lazing or if your buddy starts lazing and your missile is coded to the uh, LRFD code and it picks it up, it's going to go to lock on before launch. So it could be dashed over here because you're not in constraints. But that uh, it's seeker, um, the ability of the seeker to see is bigger than this seven and a half degrees. This is a maneuvering limit, basically. The seeker can, you know, basically, like it can see, I think it's 40 degrees either side or 35, something like that. Uh, so if it sees that laser out in its field of, field of view, uh, you're going to get the solid box, the big box which is telling you, hey, my missile just picked up a laser to whatever it's coded to, and it went solid. That means 
it is tracking laser energy. Um, if you turn further, you can also have, it can be seeing um, laser energy, but it could be dashed, which means once again, that you're out of the maneuvering limit constraint. This box happens to be uh, 20 degrees either side, okay, for a total of 40 degrees is what that box represents. So the reason it's bigger is because you already know where the target is. So as soon as the missile comes off the rail, it's trying to get there. So it has a little more latitude to, to maneuver off the rail. The lock-on after launches, it's just flying straight ahead and it's flying on autopilot pilot programmed trajectory but it's going straight ahead so you you know if you if you launch it and throw it out there and you could do a delay lays and not start lazing until it gets here you can imagine that its ability to get over here is going to be um, lessened because it's already so far down range that it just can't crank it over anymore that's why you have to get it closer to center line to launch a, launch a lock on after launch Questions on before lock on before launch versus after launch. Okay, I've used up enough of your time then. Let's put it to practice. All right, epic silence. I'm gonna finish my sandwich and Grumpy, I'll see you in the cockpit. Right on. <laughs> All right, are we on server two? Yeah, we could do a quick, uh, quick brief here for everybody. Okay. Welcome to Kutasi Air Base. You are clear to take off. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start off with a short team flight, get uh, good night used to uh, flying in a group. Put them in a. Uh, real shock. quick for this, can you, uh, can you send me where the mods are? Because I didn't know you guys had mods on the server. Oh. Install them real quick, and we'll take that long. I don't know about real quick, but I'll uh, yeah. I'll send you the link to it. You might be uh, underestimating how many mods we use. Uh... Yeah. Good. That's the best part. You may fly yeah, the flight plane to Hawk. Yeah, All the no pictures are going to be messed up now. I'll send you the mod. Oh, I don't know you're friendly. <laughs> um, do you have OVG Mesa set up for your save games holder? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll send you the repository and you can use that. So, yeah, just skip BSD 9, uh, do the rest. Uh, we'll do a little flight down to uh, the old LZ adder area down there. We'll just follow the valley. Probably do a little valley flying and cross here to traverse into the next valley and then uh, let's swing up probably here 
actually scratch that. Let's swing up to to this one. And that'll put us in this uh, this last valley. Shunt us out here. And then we'll use a couple different BPs. Um, for Vampire Flight, we'll use this as a BP-1. That'll be our firing position. And then, what do we got for 10 kilometers here? Battle position. And we'll stick Warlock a little bit further behind. Maybe they can just hang out in the uh, in the next valley over. Yeah, we'll separate ourselves from you guys to get those angles to... Um, in fact, we'll find a target and... You guys don't even need to see it if we want to exercise this. Well, or we can start targets. a little simpler and, and just do buddy lays, you know, kind of when we're close together and you see what we're looking at. How, I would, my plan here is that we start out with the buddy lays. Uh, each helicopter gives a, gives a try at the buddy lays technique because we got four uh, Strellas sitting on the ground here. Um, so we'll get you to buddy, buddy lays those, but then I do need to get my CPGs checked off on their tasks. So once that's done, then we'll switch to normal engagement. Oh. Um, if you're cool with that. Works for me. Yeah, I may have, may have overestimated this. I don't know if I'll be able to make this flight. If it's any indication, I had uh, I had to update six out of the nine mods last night, and it took like 35 minutes. At 20 megabits per second download. Damn. All right. Well. Yeah, if I have to update the mods and the game, I'm probably not going to be able to make it either. I guess I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. It's unfortunate. <laughs> no one told me. Uh, Fargo didn't let me know that. an idea uh, True. have to reprimand the boss man well he's not here so <laughs> <laughs> i'll reprimand him at another date who's not here talk bad about him uh no <laughs> come mickey. on he's a nice guy mickey mickey's not here <laughs> mickey. <laughs> that's that's the way it's done man just look around <laughs> who's not around and then talk bad about that guy <laughs> what's the fun in that <laughs> no, I, I think I'm just gonna hop off for the night. I'll, I'll see you guys later. Sorry, I didn't have them installed. My bad. Oh, good. All man. good. All right, have a good night, guys. See you. Man. See you. Good night. All right, well, now we can talk bad about night. Yeah. <laughs> right. He just Tinder's got here. Got a front seater now. Yeah. Uh, fresh fresh meat, man. Here. He's a, he's a woge. What happened to the coma? Who, me? Yeah. You, oh, down. my God, you're up. Else said shorter he's, name. he's cured. I'm cured. No more coma. Ah, yes. I'm fresh. Now it's just, I now dropped it's just the fresh. coma. Well, do we need to do this, uh, this lengthy flight, then, if we don't have a... Uh... Or does Fresh need to do some flying? I mean, I know what I'm doing. But have I don't you, know. Have you I done, done a flying with us? Yeah, OH like... got you out of the coma, man. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I only have an hour, and I only have, I probably have to go and fix some groceries, so. You gotta finish all of that beforehand, buddy. How, How many um Grumpy can are we odd? Let's see, two, four, six, eight. Don't count me. Don't count who? Six. Fresh. Okay, so you're not gonna fly? Uh probably not. You okay. have even numbers, if that's what you're asking. Easy peasy. Look. We have six uh, vampires and or and two warlocks here. Well, 
Well, you know Perfect. what? Screw these waypoints, and we don't need to worry about this flight portion. We'll just uh, go to the BP. Yeah, that's easy. So when do these normally start, like, uh, the uh, missions on Thursday, Baron? This? 2000 CST. Okay. Oh, CST. So an hour ago. <laughs> okay. Mine aren't Thursday specifically, but yeah. They usually are 2100 Eastern or 2000 Central. Yeah. So we're now Eastern is four hours behind Zulu instead of five. Um, okay, cool. Let's uh let's get in here. Ten viewers will join you if you don't mind flying then. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh go in a Kabaluti uh, helicopter. One of the ones so Two minute bathroom break. I'll be back. Yeah, same. So when the game updates, I have to update the mods, or do I just have to update the game? Just the game. Okay. All right, then I'll see you guys next Thursday or whenever. You can hang okay. out at Bo. Well, all right, he's gone. He's gone. All right. All righty, then. I was just going to keep my stream running, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to bother. Save me frame rate. Yeah, I guess people think they're not going to get anything out of it unless they're behind a stick. Yeah, whatever. Not everyone's going to. I mean, not everyone will get anything out of it unless they're behind a stick. Well, I think um, observing something that they've never seen or done before, it's uh, probably less CPU headspace intensive to just look at somebody else doing it and hear somebody else doing it. And then if, if I'm being honest, I would not like benefit at all from that, but. I'm a different, like, not everyone's me, so, you know. My experience is really the communications. I, I need to practice listening to communication so I can really get that, you know, come second nature. Yeah. Those ones are tough, yeah. Those are tough. At least for me, they are. I still want to know why your RWR wasn't picking up that SA8 yesterday. That just that stump, stumps me. It was very frustrating. Is it in the database? Maybe? Have you tried with other SA8s? Because there was a bug Ew. they fixed with the F-15. Maybe. Do we know for certain the RWR works in the Apache? Yeah, I got pings all the time off the uh, E3 on server 2 or server 1. Okay. Or both, I guess. It always says radar, 12 o'clock, searching. So we're okay to jump on the server? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Grumpy, go, go ahead and take a back seat, man. I'll fly front. Okay. I, if you don't want to, that's cool with me. I, I'm I'm ambivalent. <laughs> I figure I'll just be doing the calls, so I'll just. Well, that's that's why I want the front team actually to practice that. But if you want to. Oh, you want to do it? Okay. I'd... Cool. Uh, one last question, Burundus. Sir, the spiel that's happening between the spotter and the shooter. Is it the spotter and the CPG or the pilot? It, the CPG will be doing most of the communicating. Copy. Um, yeah. 
typically the or something like it. that because he's the one that's going to pull the trigger on the missile so yeah okay let's get this oh man i didn't even update this god oh, oh, oh you oh the update from today <laughs> well it shouldn't take long i got 120 so we're good yeah, i wonder if it's mine's taking forever to build normally it doesn't take this long in fact i gotta disable the mods first oh you know what uh i think the build broke my open xr i mean yeah, the uh has. the patch it, well what you can do I'm, is uh you know what it says backup restore those um yeah i don't know what you're referring to there i'm back in steam and yeah it's all fucked up <laughs> okay <laughs> it's the bsd mission curse it never fails um yeah my entire build is screwed now i'm gonna have to go through and figure it out do you Let's now see. Have access the root directory of bsd in steam I think it's common Steam apps and then uh, DCS World. And under there, you should have a backup directory of today. So what it does, it takes out all the files, as you know, and backs them up there and then overwrites them and brings them back to originals. You can just restore those. It, yeah, I think we might be talking about two different things. Like, I, I don't have uh, DCS through Steam. I have the standalone. But okay, even easier. The, the Steam VR is now launching because so I had been running OpenXR, which yeah, yeah. circumvents Steam and all that. Right, right. The Steam VR is launching because of a certain file in DCS calls for it and it got overwritten. It used to oh. ca uh, call uh, OpenXR and now it's calling Open, uh, what are called Steam VR. I'll give you the file name exactly. I know which one you're talking about. Give me a second. Okay. I thought you were an Oculus, Berundus. I have upgraded my life, man. Dude, I'm now rocking a G2. It's been life-changing. I bet it has. Okay, there's a file called openvr underscore api dot dll. This Just is in the DCS folder? Yeah, go to the root directory. Okay. You want to share that? Share what? I'm in VR, buddy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Plus, you don't have VR. No, I, I just want to share the, the directory. That's fine. But to go ahead. Sorry. Stupid thing. So open your uh, DCS, uh, uh, what do you call it, folder. Yep. Okay. If you look under uh, DCS World Open Beta, you should have a backup directory of today underscore backup uh, some number what's today the 28th yeah okay yeah and if you look inside there there should tell you it's bin right yep. all these files in bin got overwritten today if you restore those back to bin you should be okay to go back to open xr so do i just copy bin or do i go in oh there's only two i have d3d right. compiler and open wr right. Open, yeah, okay. copy these two back to bin and overwrite what there is there. All right. Open XR should launch now for you. Make sure you get a confirmation that's overwriting them. Replace the files in the destination. Yeah. Uh, make sure DCS is off here. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okie doke, I did that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, launch. You should be good. Make sure Steam VR is not running, though.
Yeah, now now I'm waiting for my uh, prescription lenses for the G2 because <laughs> so with my my Rift CV1, like so I have to wear readers now, you know, age related presbyopia and all that. Um, but I didn't wear my glasses under the headset because it didn't really matter. Like it was all just uniformly fuzzy anyway. I got the G2 and I put it on and now everything's fuzzy because it's so clear. Now it's like I'm trying to read a book again. So I had to wear my glasses underneath the G2 because I couldn't read anything because the resolution is higher <laughs> and it's <Yeah>. fuzzy. <laughs> so now then I had to order inserts. It's a never ending cycle. Yeah, that worked perfectly, man. I'm in. All Just right. Like Next time you know what to do. Yep. If not, call me. I'll have you on speed dial. <laughs> okay. Patchy, you said you said Cobaletti? Yeah. Uh, is that all the vampires? How do we know where they are? You see Cobaletti at the bottom. It's oh, uh, at, just at the very bottom. Yeah. Okay. There's warlocks down there too. I have patched and I gotta restart. Okay, I'm in Grumpy. Actually, cancel it. I'm I'm building the cockpit. Give me like ten seconds. Okay. okay, go for it. Tan, are you coming? I'm logging into the server now. Okay. Point man won't be long, buddy. Nope, that's fine. I know you're uh, restarting. Read you loud and clear, how me? No, uh, let me fire up the APU for you. Well, we could be. I ended up with that problem. Um, who was I flying with? Somebody. And it was brutal. Oh, necktie. Yeah, it was brutal. Oh, yes. Yeah, he was starting engines and nothing was showing up on mine. And Let me know. You should have some displays up now. And here we go, launching DCS. All right, statue, I'm in the helicopter now.
Okay, copy that. And you know how to mark them on the map as battle points? Yeah, be that's the one. Uh, navigation. Warlock 1's with you on uniform. Uh, what Victor frequency are we using? I believe it's 124 for uh, server 2. That's our air traffic control frequency. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. It is. I can do that if you're working on the waypoint, sir. Okay, comms are set. Looks like they're starting up, so I'm going to start the engines. Okay. Okay, sounds good to me. And I do see those uh, uh, battle points up. And I see your waypoint now, too. Bless you.
that's the one that he marked as our position that he wanted us to be at. Um, I don't you were getting a sandwich. He marked it down there at our point. Give me just a second. Let me get these numbers in for the target and I'll show you. All right, copy that. I think that's what he said. We'll wait and see when he, we get started here. Vampire One, Warlock One on a uniform. We're pretty much Redcon One. Um, we can depart and kind of get settled up there. Out of traffic, Warlock 0164 on pad 30 on the northeast side of Cobaletti will be uh, present position departure uh, 07 Cobaletti. That's weird. You well, yeah, so I did tune the ADF to Covaletti as a backup, but I'm in CMWS. You shouldn't be able to hear it. Probably. Uh, just just turn the volume down on it. Or that too. Nope. 
this will be my first flight. In fact, this will be my first flight in the back seat in over a week. So hang on up there. I would, in that seatbelt securely fastened. I'd have to check. I've been looking at so many students the past few days, but yeah. No, Cobaletti, Warlock 01, clear the traffic pattern to the north. Cobaletti. Yeah. Take a look and see what we've got, and and we could even just switch seats if we have the time. Yeah, he's going to go and get in position, and then we're going to link up, and then you're going to be lobbing on his frequency. Yeah, he's going to go find and laser the targets, and then we're going to each take turns shooting off his uh, laser code. Nope, going to be the uh, 64. Uh, actually, you can't do everything. They found out in the mission last night that there's actually some stuff the uh, hind is better suited for than the Apache. Uh, basically, for uh, ground attack, uh, coming in and using rockets and guns, it's fast, it's durable, and it can really pack a punch, whereas the AH-64 is more like a, a sniper. Yeah, the AH-64 needs to be hidden and just taking uh, sniper shots at stuff. It can't really be on the front line engaging units directly.
contact, make sure you guys are on 36. Vampire 4 on uh, 36 Fox Mike. Let me Charlie. Uh, Vampire plate state redcon status. I don't think it matters, just as long as we agree who's running the radios. And it probably should be you, because you're going to be talking with, uh, Warlock. Hey. Yeah. Hey, should we just do uh, the order that we're in? So statue is one, one, Warlock right one. Two. We're um, at our will be three battle position. We're actually in the middle. Oh well, fine. Well then, never mind. <laughs> I. Uh, I took Vampire 4 slot. I'm 2 now? I didn't know that, sorry. You'll be... we'll just do it to a, uh, in order of who got in here, so... We'll, we'll take 1, copies, thanks. and then uh, Joker could be 2, and then Stack you guys could be 3. Roger, Vampire 3. Vampire 3, uh, Redcon uh, 2. So did you catch that, we're Vampire 2? on station. Uh, I do now. Thanks. Okay. Uh, well, like, this is Vampire Flight. We're going to be a couple minutes here yet. Uh, one of our helicopters had an issue getting started. No worries. Uh, we're starting our search and uh, we'll call in with any reports.
Vampire 1, this is Vampire 3, we are Redcon 1. Copy that, let's uh, take off Herringbone from the grass in front of us. Three cop. Couple of traffic, Vampire play three times, 864 lifting for Herringbone departure from the grass. You ready up there? Which way are we staggering, left or right? Uh, when it's lifting, head into the grass area to set up for Herringbone departure. Just do stagger right. Okay, copy right, two's lifting. Okay, I guess three is in the way. I'm gonna move out. All right, she's on the ground. Alright, so we're going to depart, uh, runway heading, and uh, altitude's going to be 500 AGL, air speed. Let's uh, put it just our standard 120 knots. Two copies. Once we uh, reach altitude, go combat cruise. Two. Quick. Sorry guys, we kind of skipped that five second count there. We'll get it next time. So, stagger right was for the herringbone. Um, as far as formation, that's a different call. Just FYI. Vampire. Her Herringbone Vampire, is just the... Uh, hold on. We've uh, departed from the airfield. We'll be uh, on station at about 10, 15 mics. And uh, Warlock Vampire. Roger, I mistransmitted. Um, I will send you my present position. Prepare to copy. Copy, standby. Guys, sound off when you're ready to copy grids. You're on. Okay, three is ready to copy. Roger, Warlock 01 is on station, my location, 38 Tango, Kilo Mike, 689 or 345, 
eight niner over. Six eight niner three four five eight niner. Good read back. Be advised, we're observing uh, four targets. Call when ready. Uh, tell me when you're five minutes out, and we'll um, start working the first remote. I don't know, just put him as a waypoint. Empire plate, plate so fence in. Two. Three. Okay, I'm gonna wash guns and test fire. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys laser codes. Uh, Two, take Bravo, three, go Charlie.
comparison. Got a center grid for you when you're ready to copy with um, six targets. Copy, stand by. Call off when you guys are ready to copy those uh, grids. Copy. Look, Vampire, send grids. Okay, copy. This is not going to be your request for fire. This is center grid. 38 Tango, Kilo Mike, 6860-5300. I'll give you individual grids for call to fire. 6860-5300, center grid. Not a target. Copy. Okay, slowing down, guys. Okay. That works. All right, copy that, thanks. Uh, Vampire flight, set left, stack right on the other side of the, uh, the tree line here, at our 9 o'clock. Two. Say again, one. Uh, set left, stack right on the, the tree line of the BP here.
check now. Two set. Three set. Rollock Vampire is on station and ready for targets. Very copy, standby. Yeah, it handles differently after the update for sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, different. So before we get started with this, Brendan, I got a question. Okay, go ahead. So we are probably pretty close, if not within range of these IR SAMs here. Um, are we able to just like pitch up and lob these hellfires over the trees and it will grab the laser? Do we have to actually pop up until the hellfire sees it on the rail? If you're doing the lock on after launch, all you gotta do is select low or high really. So if you got obstacles in front of you, you know, select low. So high trajectory will clear a 1,000 foot obstacle if you have 1,500 meters of standoff. Low trajectory will clear a 600 foot obstacle, correction, 260 foot obstacle if you have 600 meters of standoff. So all you gotta do is sit there at a hover, back up far enough that you have, you know, at least 600 or 1,500 meters of distance between you and the 260 foot obstacle or 1,000 foot obstacle and just shoot the missile towards the solid box, provided you're set up correctly and you have the grid in your nav system. The missile will clear the obstacle, and you tell me when you shoot it, and we will start lasing when the missile's in the air. Copy. Okay, so I think the best way to do this is for us to use that uh, shared laser code, which, uh, what was it, was it um, hotel? Is that what we decided on? No, nope, negative. We're going to give you our laser code. It should, it'll be in your list, but we're going to tell you what it is. Copy. Okay, let's go ahead. And one more thing, since we've got three helicopters here, we'll try to do it in like a three sequence. So one will take the first target, two will take the second target, third will take the uh, third target. Yep, we've already got, we already planned for that, we got targets for you. Awesome, okay. Um, okay, Vampire 1 is ready. Okay, Vampire Warlock copies, you're on station. We have targets. I'm going to transfer you to my front seater. Uh, stand by for remote hellfire. Vampire 1, remote hellfire. Copy. Vampire 1, this is Warlock on remote hellfire. Warlock 1, Vampire 1, uh, Remote Hellfire, set. Grid, 3-8, Tango, Kilo, Mike, 6-8-2-3, over. Grid, Kilo, Mike, 6 8 2 3 5 3 5 4. Vampire 1. 1 BMP, in the open, 1 missile, Low out. My code is one 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 one. BP in the open. Low out. One 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 laser code. Number one. LTL three four zero degrees. Range eight thousand meters. Did you see the LTL was? Say again. 
LTL 345 degrees, range 8,000 meters over. LTL 345, range 8,000. Okay, so I'm just going to talk through what's happening now. You copied the grids, you got the laser target line in our range. The next thing you guys are doing is inputting that grid into your target list and then make it an acquisition source. Then change your channel, look for 1111, I believe it's Mike. Change your channel to primary channel uh, Mike and then you're good to go. Okay, so I've got it set up here from the front channel mic. Um, I've got my target put in, set it up as acquisition source. I'm not sure if 10 beers is going to be able to do that. He's just trying to hover the aircraft right now, so is it easier if I just kind of direct him where to point the helicopter? So, when you was the missile, you should both see the low owl constraints box come up dashed. You know, it'll be on the left or right unless you happen to be pointed directly at it. All he has to do is put the is put the box, so basically pedal turn and put the box, you know, basically under the lubber line in the center and it should go solid. Provided you're less than eight thousand meters. So when you put it up as an acquisition source, what's your range? Five kilometers. Okay, so you're within range and you select low, your low or high, right? Delivery mode? Um, oh, I'm on direct, hang on. All right, I got it set to low. Okay, what I want you to do, set it back to, um, just for training, all right? Set it back to direct, and then move your CADs around and watch what happens to that constraints box. It'll be flying all over the screen as you move your TADS around. That's because the TADS line of sight is driving where that box is. So if you if you go acquisition source fixed, WAS missile with direct, your your box will be in the center of the screen because your TADS is fixed, right? So when you now select low or high with your target as your acquisition source, that box should just snap over to where that target is. Yep, that's what it did. Now we got a solid box. Okay, so you're in constraints. Verify, you know, you're up mic, you're ready to shoot, and then the next thing you do is say, Warlock 1, Vampire 1, ready over. Warlock, Vampire 1, ready, over. Alright, ready, go. And... Jump, and fire, over. Rifle, over. Good, uh, good hit. Copy, and the mission out. Okay, how'd that work out? Your missile just left and climbed, right? Yeah, that was, that was fucking awesome. Okay, so, so the next permutation of that is tell us the time of flight when you shoot it, because we can delay lasing if we want to. I mean, in DCS, I don't know if there's a reason to, but, um, you know, you can give us the time of flight, etc. But maybe we'll just save that for another day. Yeah, copy that. 
Alright, uh, two will be up next with you. Copy. Just a second, and uh, I'll give Go ahead and give him the time of flight when it's our turn. Hey, Vampire Warlock, what was your gun target line, just out of curiosity? Stand by. Say again. What was your gun target line? So when you turned to that target, what was your heading? Uh, I think we're... S hang on. I'll get him to point at it again here. Three... Oh, like, three, five, nine, almost three, six, zero. Okay, and we were three, four, five, so only about 15 degrees difference. Yeah, and it worked perfectly. Hey, is that something that needs to be called out ahead of time? Like what? Vampire 2, Warlock 1, Remote Hell 5, over. Vampire 2, this is Warlock 1, Remote Hellfire, over. Grid, 3-8, Tango, Kilo Mike, 6 8 three, four, five, three, four, seven, over. SA in the open, one missile, low owl, my code is 1111, my LTL is 343 degrees, range 7,770 meters over. standing by Ready up. Fire over. Let's pull out. End of mission, 1SA destroyed. Good job up there.
Yeah, he said SA destroyed. Hey, uh, Vampire 3 Warlock, are you up for hmm. something a little bit different? Uh, Vampire 3, I'm just trying to hang on to you guys. Uh, sure. It depends. Okay, um, are, have you guys been observing these targets or are they totally blind for you? Totally blind. Okay, disregard then. We'll just, we'll go with the previous roll. So in that case, uh, Vampire 3, remote hellfire, ready. Yep, stand by. We're uh, working up another target. Well, you uh, must have done something, right? Because you hit the target. On remote hellfire, over. Vampire 3, uh, Vampire 3 remote hellfire out. Ah, uh, gotcha. And that's All fine. Right, that's totally fine. 3-8, um, Tango, Kilo. Mike, six eight five three five three four four over. Target at three eight Tango Kilo Mike six eight five three five three four four over. Good copy. One SA in the open. One missile. Low out. My code is one 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 one. LTL 344 degrees, range 7,865 meters. Lampard 3, 1 SA in the open, 1 missile, LOAL, code is 1111. Uh, your LTL is 344, range 7,000. Over. Yep, set, standing by out. You know, it's funny, it's actually not terrible, it's my right arm that's sore, that's from the uh, cyclic. And then the... Co no, no, uh-uh. And then the collective is that keeping torque seems a little bit harder to get that dialed in with the new update. Yep. Oh no, there is a part of me that is somewhat male. No one else is doing it, so I'm not going to do it. Good, you keep an eye on him. Stand rifle. Vampire warlock. This is fire. Time of uh, five seconds. Five seconds.
Say again, last. Vampire Warlock. Understand there's a missile in the air. Vampire Warlock, impact not observed. That's far again. Okay, let, let's back it up. So, we didn't get a rifle call, we weren't prepared to laze, and then it was five seconds, and then there was another call that said 20 seconds. So how many missiles were launched? Launched one missile, however, I did not see on the display the number of seconds. I was supposed to see that on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, it should, it's not so critical. Just make sure you let us know, just say rifle, because we won't, uh, and don't fire until we acknowledge rifle, right? Okay, copy that. Yeah, so, so when we say fire, you say fire out. Or, um, yeah, when we say fire, you acknowledge fire, and then you'll say rifle, and we say rifle to acknowledge that we heard it, which means we're ready to laze, um, because we don't want a missile in the air and we're not, you know, unmasked or whatever. Understood. Um, all right, I'm going to hand it back over. Let's let's try without going through the whole call again. Let's do another missile. Okay, we're ready to go. So, fire over. Fire ready. Rifle out. into mission one, the SH toy. Uh, say again. I just passed him into mission one, SH destroyed. Vampire one, do you want another target? Yeah, we're gonna try something. Try something a little fancy here. Just stand by when we set up. Uh, go ahead, send the grid. Okay, grid. Vampire uh, uh, 1, you can use the exact same grid that I gave you earlier, it's close enough. Copy, we'll use, uh... Initial BP, BMP grid, stand by. Buddy. Good eyes. That's funny. has landed. I don't feel like having carpal tunnel syndrome. Nice. Yeah, we were just talking about that too.
want to be yeah, a we joker just, when I go up. We were just testing. It's all good. I purple tunnel's not worth this. I'm not manly enough like Joker. Warlock, vampire, uh, accept over. Roger, accept. Where am I supposed to see this, uh, because you, it says in your paper, ready, time of flight, 20 seconds. Where am I supposed to see that before I launch the missile? Because Boeing software sucks, you don't see it until after the missile is gone. Oh, okay, so just ignore that uh, time of flight part then. Yeah, it would be it would be part of your rifle call. Um, it's also you know you could typically you'd have it on an e-board, so for like ranges, um, you'd have a kind of a matrix like six thousand meters is about twenty seconds, five thousand meters is about eighteen seconds. I'll just stay ready. So uh, vampire or warlock vampire ready. Okay, ready out. And fire over. Rifle. Rifle out. Fifteen seconds. When I say destroy, stand by second missile. Standing by. The VSI is incorrect with this update. And to stay hovering where you are, I want to get a cool picture of this. Fire over. Yep. Rifle. Rifle out. Yeah, so I need to show about a 200 foot per minute descent to be uh, maintaining altitude. Yeah, no bueno. End of mission, 1T90 destroyed. It is. Copy. All right, guys, uh, we got to get the CPD checkoffs for uh, our two RL3s here, so we're probably going to transition to uh, um, our own guided uh, operations. It was really fun. Uh, it's really cool being able to lob missiles over the trees. I think that's going to be uh, a huge benefit for uh, engaging pine threat targets with the 64 Yep, just wait till KW shows up. Yes. Oh man, it's going to be a fucking dream team. So the real hero is going to be the KW in the face of threats. The real hero has always been KW. <laughs> man, you guys could like, be ma masking behind some shit with this fucking ball token over the roof. And be untouchable. Yeah, so real quick, the other thing I wanted to do was the remote low ball. Um, that's why I asked whether your shots had been all in the blind, which is, that that's cool. That's what I wanted to get after. But as a confidence check, like, you could also remote low ball. So if you wanted to make sure that you're picking up or that you're in a position for your missile to pick up our laser, you could just kind of unmask and call us to laze and then make sure that your missile is picking it up. But we executed like the most complex um, aspect of this, so well done. Um, I think we made a lot of money tonight. Thank you, sir. Man, yeah, much appreciated. Glad to have you guys out here and uh, show us how to do the do the trick there. We'll uh, definitely be using that in the future. Yeah, thanks for the classroom time too. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, we're gonna go shoot some rockets or something. Have fun, boy. Copy that. Good job, fellas. All right, guys, go ahead and settle the helicopters down. I'm gonna take a quick second to do the bathroom break, and then we'll brief us in the next portion. Thanks.
again, Grumpy. I'll set up a farp here so we can re uh, refuel. They're gonna. We got a lot of fuel. Uh, I want, we used a few missiles. I want to rearm as well. Copy that. Alright, you should be able to rearm and refuel here now. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, we've got to move up a little closer to these trucks to do it. Copy, moving closer. We do, but they're both moving at the same time, so I'm going to wait for them to settle down and then I'll figure out where to put it from there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I turned the Robbie on. Let me double check. Yeah, it's not, it's off too. Yeah, but it's also empty. So it obvious. I I turned it on the ground, and it must have uh, fed the tanks while we were doing our thing. That E is the empty Robbie tank. Yeah, the 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 backup one. Yes. Tracer fire, somebody's getting shot at. No idea what that was. Say again. Well, it was 10 beers, but I don't see anything hitting him. Guys, will you rearm and refuel here? I'm just gonna set things up. Hey, Brandis, are you using the uh, the number two target area? Because I'm gonna reset that for our uh, training. Nah, we're we're RTB. We're gonna head back. Copy. Hey. Tin Bears, Specfire. Oh, wrong channel. Hey, Tin Bears, Specfire. Can you confirm what's your VSI reading sitting on the ground? Minus one and a half. Okay, yeah, I'm showing almost minus 200. Yeah, minus so, uh, uh, 150, that's what I have, sorry. And okay. And I show a forward speed of one. Yeah, I'm showing a forward speed of one and uh, minus probably 190 on the uh, VSI. So that's not working right. No, and we've uh, started at 29.53, I think. Yeah. But, I mean, still, the VSI should be reading zero sitting on the ground, not minus or plus anything. 
Yeah, affirmative. That's a radio alt, so yeah, it should be zero. Yep. Yeah, my radio alt is at zero, but my VSI is reading it. Yeah, 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 you're right. It should be a zero also. Yeah, my, uh, what the heck was that? Radar altitude is zero. And where are you seeing your negative number on the, on the IS? Alright, so you see where it's zero and that little triangle that represents vertical speed? Yes. Where is your triangle sitting right now? Like negative one. Yeah, okay, so you're at neg neg minus 100 feet. So you're, you're showing a descent when you should be uh, showing level. Gotcha. So sort there's of this incredible noise behind you, like this roaring sound. Uh, one, this is three, uh, my CPG yeah, sorry has about to that. go. There's a uh, SA-6 in the area. What? Alright. Hey, I need to leave by midnight, which is half uh -oh. an hour from now. Yeah, we're just gonna there. do, uh... Ah, fuck it. You know what? Let's just RTB. Roger that. Sounds like it. All right. I'm our flight state red phone status. Two is Redcon 1. Three, Redcon 1. Alright, departure, takeoff shock order, heading 270, and uh, altitude 400 feet ATL, 60 knots until flight is formed. Two. Three. Okay, one is lifting. I'm going to circle around clockwise to the right to avoid these trees and not have to fly over. Two. Three. Two's lifting. Yeah, I had already said it actually. But yes, in answer your question, either one of us setting Please it should be able to. I am, yes. Are you? Well, it'll help you write down those uh, coordinates. No, I don't think any of us could. Yeah, well, he had it written down, too. Copy, going in, speeding up to 120. Two. Three. Well, I mean, certainly that's an acquired skill, um, especially if you know what to expect.
Cobble Eddy, Warlock 01 is uh, five kilometers to the north inbound landing, Cobble Eddy. Uh, it's up to lead. We'll see what he decides. That's cool. Can you see Warlock up uh, just to the left of lead there? Shadow is if they're going to fly the gazelles. Correct. Kobaletti, Warlock 01 entry, right downwind, landing to the north, Kobaletti. So you know uh, Burundis' story, right? So he flew Kiowas in Afghanistan and Iran for or Iraq for a while, and then came back and then certified on the Apache. He is, he's actually still active duty, but looking to retire here pretty quick. <laughs> I doubt that, but yeah. You got the first part right anyways. Yeah, so he is flying a desk right now. Houseman actually is a, is a current Apache pilot. And there's one other in here. Europe somewhere. I think we have three or four Apache pilot, active Apache pilots here. I mean, it's close relative to what DCS can do. It's certainly not a level D sim by any means. All right, guys, we're turning left two six zero. Man, this guy's all over the place. That was a big spot. Ah, getting lag. Now that I cleaned up. Oh. No, it's not just you. It happens to me every once in a while. Yeah. Traffic, Vampire Flight two times, 64 inbound from the east, 5 kilometers, full stop. But run this. I guess this. number 3 doesn't count anymore. You know, I'm rolling over here. <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> bad. Not when 3 has to land. Mickey would never have landed his helicopter, for the record. Uh, Vampire Flight of Three coming in for final. Uh, gonna fly directly to Parkham. Hey, I guess doesn't have to rake the garden like I have to. Whoa, I guess we're slowing. We are slowing. Sorry, three. No problem. 
problema, amigo. That was hideous. Not here. Sorry, we're gonna bail out of the server and debrief. Sounds good. I thought uh, he sorry, was saying, yeah, yeah. I it's thought he was saying, my, screw you guys. Well, I, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah you said we're bailing screw you guys uh, I have to remember not to push the talk when I think those things out loud <laughs> <laughs> alright I got some pretty dope screenshots of us lobbing missiles over trees I'm going to try to get them posted here yeah um did you have to like kind of gauge how far from the obstacles you were you just behind trees or like a ridge line or what did it look like? Yeah, I'll send you a picture. Do you have a tag view two of this or not? Yeah, I'll blow tag view in a sec. By the way, putting giving those grid coordinates helps a lot having it on the TSD. So like that, I can kind of line up for the shot. Yeah, and, exactly. And not like say uh, chase the box. Yep, you can. So you can line up on the T on your TSD, and that'll probably get your box about where it needs to be. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's great for situational awareness too. Exactly. No guessing or whatnot. There it is. I know where it is. I'm ready for it. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I see the missile leaving. No target in sight. Very nice. Yeah, spec, like it, a great technique is, you know, when you're just listening to the radio and other things are happening, when somebody is, you know, you hear a, a contact report or something and you know a grid is coming, I just kind of automatically prepare to either copy it down 
or I just hit point add, enter, enter, and my keyboard is ready to accept the grid so I can just plug it in. So I start building a picture of where other people's targets are too, rather than, you know, maybe writing them down and putting them in it, however you want to do it. But I always kind of just listen and try to prepare for, you know, so I know where other people have been shooting things because more than likely there's more targets there. So that just gets me oriented on the map. And, you know, you could even slew the the tabs there um, just by listening actually. on the radio. Yeah. I mean, putting enter, enter, and you're ready for the eight digits. You know what I mean? It's freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah. It, it, the only thing that screws me up is when uh, I'm sitting there, I'm ready to enter the digits, and then all of a sudden there's like a different uh, grid characters. Like it's like uh, instead of golf, golf, it's like Kilo Mike or something. Then I'm like, ah, shit, I got to go back. and. Yeah. So, you know, you notice Grumpy was was sending the, the grid zone identifier, well, the 100,000 meter square, 38 tango, and then the grid zone identifier, whatever that was, Kilo Mike, I think it was. Um, normally, it's not necessary to send 38 tango um, more than once. Like, if everybody, like, to, the the chance that you're, in two different hundred thousand meter square boxes is atypical. Sometimes, like if you're right on the line, maybe, but um, sometimes, you know, it's more likely that you may be transitioning from uh, golf Mike to golf November or something like that. The the grid zone identifier. That's what happened and, last yeah. night. We, well, we he, Rayak was right on the uh, center. It was thirty six uh, on one side and thirty seven on the other. Here too, like right down the center of our AO. No, not here. This, this one doesn't have a thirty. This one's sure, we started at we started at thirty-seven uh, Tango Golf Golf. At oh, the he's talking about he's talking yeah, about we, the uh, the zone, like the thirty-seven part. Right, we started at thirty-seven, and then everything was at thirty-eight, the target area. Yeah, so we did. Yeah, so we did so transition. Right. Yeah, yeah so it's good it's good to give that first one to to get everybody on the same sheet and then you know there's nothing wrong with sending it i find like when people start working with each other and you kind of start getting the flow most of the time it just ends up being the eight digit grid like you don't even have to include like if you're sending multiple targets back and forth it's understood that everybody has the the 100,000 meter square um, the 38 Tango or 37 Sierra or whatever it is, and then the grid zone identifier, which is the letters. You just kind of have to figure out is it needed or not. It's nicer when people are just sending the eight-digit grids. Um, and for mm -hmm. like, uh, if you're just wanting to let your wingman know kind of where you are, like, hey, you know, like, give me a quick position report. You can give them a six-digit grid, and you just put the zeros on the end when you're entering it. So, you know, it'd just be, hey, where are you at? I'm at 684-327. And that, that's good enough. That gets you within 100 meters of where they're at. And to put it in the, in the nav system, you just add a zero to the, to the end of each three-digit pair. Or triplet, I should say. Yeah. It's just techni technique stuff. I got to get used to doing four-digit grids when uh, AMC, because... Up until the 64 came out, almost everything that we did at BSD was three digits or six digits. Um, yeah, that's. But there were no systems that actually used an MGRS, right? You had to translate everything. Yeah, it was basically easy finding shit on the F10 map is what it was used for. Yeah, and that's fine. Like if you're just orienting somebody to a map location, just give them a six digit or sometimes even a four digit. Like that's good enough to get their eyes looking in the right place. If you want to give them a precise location, you give them the eight digit. Yeah. Uh, so here we are, just coming up into the BP. Yeah. Uh, or accidentally overflew it. It's just a miscommunication error. And then we all picked some nice spots. Huddle, huddle, huddle. Everybody huddle up. <laughs> nice and close. It was actually a really, really good uh, combat formation here, guys. So I was watching out the side, and everybody was nicely comfortable up in here. It was good hovering. And then uh, kind of we are talking about 
the procedure. What's the what's the green on that? Oh, that's elevation on this, right? The that's green the shading versus yellow shading. It's trees. So so that's actually whole, where vegetation is. Okay. Yeah, this is this is a, a general idea of where a tree line is. It's it's a uh, modification of the F10 map, so it's kind of like not all that great. You get the general idea based off of it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when the first missile is. Uh, about there. So I think this is our like we can we cannot see the target here. This is there's trees probably about this high in front of us right now. So we're literally lobbing. You don't see all the trees because there was one right in front of me. Oh yeah, there was there was a tree. There's also one single tree right here. Just don't know why. It's just there. But it was great because it helped me to keep my hover a, little, a lot more steady. Yeah, nice, same here. Uh, like a reference point. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly right, what so you do. Missile out. Up she goes over the trees. Yeah, once the Kiowa hits, it'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. Yep. Uh, you could just shoot laser after laser. All you got to do is the uh, the A sixty four is just sit there and pull the trigger. Did then... you see all those targets, Grumpy? I didn't know there were that many out there. <laughs> no, hell no, I didn't see all those. That, that's why we got shot at in those trees, and I I scanned pretty good when we. Yeah. Joker and uh, Picure's missile. So were there any were there any uh, hiccups in terms of understanding what was happening and you know plugging in the grids and turning to the constraints box or whatever um, for the front for the front seaters like any questions? Not Yeah, remember, code is changing your laser, what it's putting out. Okay, channel is changing what the missile is looking for. Yeah, so that's the one that went errant. So so this is the one where we had some communication issues. Um, so when when you guys call ready, that means you're WASD. Your grids are in. You've turned you, like the next thing you are prepared to do is press fire. Then you you tell us ready, and then we don't re really even have to acknowledge ready. Uh, you know that's kind of like superfluous. You you say warlock zero one vampire one ready over, and then the next thing we say is fire over, and you say rifle over, and we say rifle out, and that's when you press the fire button. Because you want to make sure that we heard your rifle before you launch. So that we're, because worst case, what happens is we're behind a tree in a mask position. And we don't hear you say rifle and you shoot the missile. And we're not prepared to, to laze. I like how much that one curved. That's a pretty, yeah. it was pretty cool. I was watching it and it should just turn towards the target. Yeah, so nice. what Grumpy did at the end there, um, what we wanted to do was just kind of sequence rapid fire a couple missiles. So one grid is close enough, like you can launch it because all those things were clustered. Um, we just had you launch on the same grid over and over again, and he was just transitioning his, his target point, his hit spot. That was us. We What I wanted to do was I wanted to see if we could just land on the ground and shoot them like a ground-based target, but the... Uh the pylons go into a stowed position when you land on the ground, so they just will refuse to do it. I didn't realize that. So we had to get back in the hover to do it. Even when you put the override? Yeah, as soon as you touch like the the pylons when we were in the air, the pylons were pointing upwards. But as soon as he like touched the ground, the pylons went to a neutral position. They're almost pointing downwards and they Yeah, like, they go to they go to ground stow. 
so that the yeah. loaders can slide the missiles on. Yeah, it's yeah, like the weight on wheels thing. Yep. So, so it didn't work. One of one of the things that we have to verify is that you have ten feet of clearance for two hundred meters in front of you, because you have to have at ten feet below the aircraft clear for two hundred meters out front, because that's for the missile drop. Yeah. Um, so here's a good. So, here's a nice view of the trajectory, actually. That's the minimum launch envelope, right? 10 what, feet, this? 200. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure ten... I get what you're saying there. So the missile will drop when it comes off the rail. So uh... part of the things that you have to verify is, do we have anything in front of us, you know, higher than 10 feet that's 200 meters close close to us? So you get you got to have a clear spot 10 feet below the aircraft, 200 meters out front. Got it. I didn't realize I the missile dropped. Yeah. I don't think it's modeled in DCS. Just looking at the the track of the missile, it just immediately goes up. So maybe that's a DCS thing. But yeah. should probably still practice that anyway. It it may not even be that much of a. It may not even drop that much in real life. It's just you know for safety measure for for extra. Oh yeah, because um, what if the it like doesn't fire the motor for like a picosecond and then it drops a meter, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. A delay. Oh, that's cool. I like that that it could just lob over the trees and we can just stay behind cover the whole time. I think this is when we did those uh, rapid fires. You had uh, one missile launch. Oh, wow! Look at that turn. Yeah, that's weird. Did you did you move targets there, Grumpy? Or did uh, we delay lasing? I wonder. I. That well, I think Statue was red laser. <laughs> that wasn't the lapid sequence. No, I was out of laser from the time it came off the rail on that one. Yeah. Well, our acquisition that source. Statua, you were like facing the same position as the first missile shot, right? Yeah, we were facing this right here, is where we were facing. And then the yeah. BMP was over, or T90, something was over here that we shot at. Yeah. And Statue, you saw when you were up direct. When you moved your line of sight, your box moves with it, right? Because what's driving that box is now your own TAD's line of sight. As soon as you went to low or high, you're telling the aircraft, my target is somewhere else. And it snapped to whatever your acquisition source is. Yeah, me and Ten Beers were observing the box movement. It was kind of cool. Did that yeah, one blow okay. up? <laughs> Must have hit his barrel or something. Didn't they fix that in a patch? It It did. Look like it blew up in my point of view. Uh, so we still whatever. found on the way back, we found that the the waypoint stuff between front and back seat still doesn't work right. He he was showing uh, home base or Cobaletti as his fly to waypoint, but I I wasn't showing it in the back. So they still haven't got that stuff right. Yeah, I found that you have to go into the route page, like make it into a route, and then hit the RTM button, and then select that route, even though the route is selected. It's kind of bug weird. Those seem like easy fixes that they would have been able to address by now. You'd think so. We rammed and refueled and then decided that we didn't have enough time to, to continue on. Totally cheated by just spawning this in. Yeah. I, that's a, I don't know. It's clear line of sight, really, um, as long as you're getting a good solid laser return. And DCS, I think it's 9,900. 9, what is it? Almost 10 kilometers? Yeah. yeah. We tested that one evening with Fargo. Didn't we? Were you with us? Spec fire? We were yeah, trying yeah. To was, see how far we could do it. Exactly. It was uh, nine, 10 kilometers. Yeah, it wouldn't do 10. You had to be in. Yeah, 9999. Nine, nine, yeah. Four yeah. nines. I'm not Dash? 
I'm not envisioning what you're describing. So in the HMD? It's the out of constraint. It says you're out of constraints. Uh, yeah, it's greater than or something. Oh, it it may be that it's not picking up anything at all. I'm not sure. I'd have to see that symbol. Well, put it this way, Picure. If you see nine 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 nine, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Eight and below, you're good. Well, so as the, as the designator, technically, you don't even need to store the target. As long as you have it in your line of sight and you can put the laser on it, that's good enough. But I would want to store it so that I can recall, you know, slew back to it if I lose, if I lose the target, et cetera. So technically, you don't even have to store the target as the designator if you can derive a grid some other way, et cetera. The easiest way to get the grid to it is to store it and then look at it on your coordinate page. So the, I guess the simplistic answer is yes, store it, call up that target so that you can read the grid to your whoever you're calling to shoot the missile for you. Um, but what we didn't do tonight was just kind of like you guys were next to each other. You could have done some buddy fire stuff where nobody had to store any targets. You you know, you tell your buddy right next to you, hey, I'm out of late, uh, hellfires. You got any more? Yeah, I got three more. Okay, my my line of sight is 359, and he basically, you know, you're, he's right next to you, so he faces the same direction you're facing. He said, all right, I'm lost missile. I'm up, uh, you know, code 1111. Um, he verifies he's up 1111, and you could shoot it then. Like, there's all this grid passing stuff is for... Like I said, the worst case where we don't know where the other guy is and you're shooting blind. But if like you guys were right next to each other, you could easily just laze and your own missile would just pick up that 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 laser spot right next to him because it's already facing in that direction. And then eventually enter the FCR. Oh god. Yeah. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be, it's a complex machine for sure. Like just getting everybody to talk the length, you know, understand the terminolo terminology and the language and the concepts to get to this point, I think is a win. Um, FCR is, is a whole nother ball game. Does the Kiowa, can it do FCR as well? At talk to the Apaches? No. Oh. Uh, the the Kiowa. Well, so what do you, it doesn't have a radar. So what do you mean talk to it? Well, I mean, can you, I guess what I was wondering is, can you set targets and transmit to RFCR? No. Okay. You can find a target in your MMS and derive the grid the same way that you did, you know, with, by storing the target in the TSD, same, same deal. Then you can pass that grid to the guy, uh, to your FCR aircraft um and you can you can shoot a, a radar missile based on a location and it can find a target out there with its internal radar so you could basically shoot a, a radar missile passively just to a grid like fly to this grid and then it'll turn on its radar when it gets close enough and it'll look for a target we're gonna have to have like 70s night sometime where we can't fly any of this high tech stuff. Yeah. No kidding. It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. Especially when nothing you know, you we don't know if it quite works right in DCS. Like half this shit is inconsistent and broke because it's early access and it's very difficult to train and teach because the behavior is inconsistent so you can't reinforce 
proper procedure. Yeah, and it's hard to learn for the same reason. We don't know if right. it's not working because we were screwing up or if because it's exactly. Not. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, who has ED's ear? <clears throat> we do, apparently. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. We've got Big Nui and Lazy here. Well, get on Discord and start making a fuss. <laughs> Yeah, fix the nav system. That's my biggest beef. I just want to like have steerable waypoints when I put something into that it shows up properly and not have to do all the workarounds and stuff like that. Yeah, I hear I that. I expect like your your point about putting targets in and seeing them on the TSD. That's like the number one thing. That's huge for situational awareness. You when you you know start putting targets in and you develop that understanding of where you are you just look at your tsd and you can sort of plan your inbound runs and all that kind of stuff figure out how far you are away from it oh yeah yeah i, I always use the the dig chart you know with the contour lines gives me a nice yeah. uh, geographical uh, picture along with the targets yeah like if i'm in an aircraft in the real world now Without digital maps and stuff, I was sweating. I was nervous. <laughs> I've become a kid of the 2000s. Like, I can't find my way around <laughs> me, anymore. Me and you both, brother. Me and you both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started flying. I had no idea what a GPS stood for, let alone it existed. Yeah. Yeah, same. Well, don't go far. You forget your cell phone at home. You feel lost. You can't drive your car. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Have you watched those shows about? I think they had one on MTV where they had these uh, kids. They they put them out in the middle of a desert in a house, and they had to figure out everything where there were no electronics. They couldn't even know. They didn't even know how to wash their clothing or stuff like that. <laughs> oh my god! Because everything yeah. they had was metal. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> All right, guys. I think I'm gonna call it a night. Thanks yeah, a lot, Gabriel. Right. This. Night, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the Look forward to the next one. So um, Thursday, I think we may move it just so not to conflict with with you guys. But this was a good collaborative event. Um, we, but it it may get busy if we're all trying to meet up on Thursdays. We're not gonna. This is just it's this Thursday. You're not gonna see me on Thursday for another eight weeks. That's just how my schedule works. Actually, ah, you'll see okay. me on Thursday next week, and then it will be for another eight weeks. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. All right. Cheers, fellas. See you, guys. Right. Yeah, Thanks, Tatua. Three. Make sure you log it for your seat. So for your CPG, put the CPG one, not AH64. Yeah, put CPG point, man. Right, I did. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. See, see you guys. Have a good night, guys.